Hello there, I'm Sophie Lord and it is great to speak to you all today. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening um, and a special thanks to all of you for joining and of course to the team at Landor and Fitch and Jane Garrett in particular for making this extraordinary meeting of minds happen. So let's start. So today I am talking about the human and if potentially the shared future we have, is it human after all? Let's rewind. Remember this? Remember the future we thought we were all facing? One that the defining moment of our time was all about technology, the rise of the robots, about how potentially the super, the super bot AI was taking over humanity and that technology was going to be in control. And of course, the huge philosophical debate that raged around whether this era of progress was really retrogressive at society. Well, that was the defining moment of our time. But of course, what we weren't looking at was 2020 and the pandemic and the reality that we're all facing. So over the last couple of weeks, I've taken a little bit of time to really look, relook at that narrative of deep technology and artificial intelligence to see if it really is the um, if it really is a brave new world for technology, or is there a new place for it as our world meets new reality and in a world of transition? But let's start with what's indisputable. You know, in our new world of remote everything, technology is of course helping us all. Video conferencing has been the hero both for our economies, for our jobs, for our social lives, potentially even for our mental health to stop us all feeling so isolated. And we have witnessed a new super brand. Of course, we can't mention this time without Zoom. And for me, it has won the race. It has become, of course, the new category verb, which is what we want all brands to be when they are on the rise. A super brand is born. However, when we take a step back and look at the defining narrative and the story that we are all witnessing at the moment, I believe that actually a far more profound narrative has emerged from these times. And what is fascinating when we've set the context we have is that it is almost entirely human. And whilst technology has undoubtedly enabled us to carry on with life, it is the enabler, not the controller. Because when we think about that, when we go to Zoom, um, how what we want to see is humans. We are there for a human connection, to create an emotional connection, to free us all from socialized isolation and realize that there are other humans existing as well. I found a fascinating example in China that to keep spirits up, people were handwriting notes. This is human craft. With Fortnite and Travis Scott, it was still Travis Scott that people were seeing rather than Fortnite. And when we talk about, use brand speak, potentially the sacred asset of this pandemic, certainly in the UK, what we are looking at is hand-drawn rainbows in windows. That is the viral effect of today's context and it's deeply, deeply human. You know, even when we look to the bleeding edge of science, which we are all looking to every day, what has emerged in terms of a story and in terms of visual representation of it is that it is a really human story. It's people we are connecting with and it's people we are seeing. And of course, we can't mention these times without the birth of a new hero in our midst. And here are our new heroes. They are heroic, and they are heroic, as these beautiful photographs show, actually because of their humanity and potentially because of the frailty of the human skin. But, and where in this story, of this profound story of humanity, is AI and deep tech? Where are they in the narrative? Because when we look at that question from a rational perspective, this should be its moment. I just have got a, there we go. I am just 
checking for moderator speak. It is done. So apologies for that. We're now on full screen. Um, you know, where is AI and deep tech in this narrative? It should be its moment. Let's look at this with a rational point. You know, humans cannot do the job that we actually need doing now. The pandemic reality is one of huge numbers, multiple data points. It's all about measuring risk and probability. And of course, we know, thanks to the amazing work of Daniel Kahneman, that actually this is something that the human brain is not good at. Our system two thinking is not as sharp as our system one thinking. We need technology to be there and doing this. And of course, the rational story as well is that we do know that AI is playing an absolutely fundamental role in our lives today, whether that's identifying spread, whether that's identifying cause, whether it's identifying treatments. The biggest brands in the world, of course, in technology are stepping up and helping. However, and here's the twist that I'd really like to share and focus with you today, is at a brand level, the narrative is different. Because when we look at actually both the language, the visual representation, the photography, the semiotics of what is going on, we are seeing that technology and AI is actually a dark force in a dark world. The colours are a human. There is a retro language being used and it's all about threat and danger. A quick look to, of course, good old Google Images, you know, shares this, that actually when we ask for their story in a time of COVID, what are we seeing? Tech stacks and threatening molecular meiotics. And then when we look to it, you know, with our brand lens on again, in terms of its brand positioning, well, actually it does emerge, but as a friend to the surveillance state, not to the humans we've been so celebrating earlier. So we see it as a robo dog, a law enforcer, synonymous with surveillance and authoritarianism. Um, and we've got the UN saying actually now that the AI is potentially the biggest threat again to humanity. So we're back to that original narrative. And of course, just bland. You know, what happened to Watson? Watson emerged on the market. It's potentially, you know, the most exciting personality in AI. And here we see it very much relegated to a useful, but an enabler position. So when we see almost the clash of those two stories and those two narratives, it did leave me thinking, has humanity trumped AI? Has the human story actually won? Something when we think back to my initial slide on that panorama of robots winning the race, actually has humanity won in this case? Or as a brander, is it just that AI's brand is just not working? Of course, it's not as simple as such a binary question because actually I believe and I'd argue that this is all about understanding the context and the human context that we are all living in. Because we know in crisis and the unknown, humans are hardwired to look for authenticity and understanding. They look for EQ in leadership. They want to be understood and we want our hand held. And of course, the missing link for the very nascent technology of AI and deep tech in its widest understanding is that there is no emotional connection. When we look back to those imagery and the language we saw of semiotics of danger and threat, there's no emotional connection. And we know something for certain. We don't know very much at the moment about what our future is going to look like, but we do know that it will be about the unknown. So while we move potentially out of crisis, the unknown is going to stay with us. And therefore, what an opportunity, because the opportunity becomes about creating the emotional connection. I do believe that there is going to be this moment for all of us, um, you know, as we start to emerge and realise the implications of today's context, that we will have to make peace with the fact that both intellectually, 
and pragmatically, we need AI and robots in our lives. Therefore, how do we start to bring some form of cohesion to these two very distinct narratives that I've spoken about? Well, there certainly is a step one, and that is around humanizing the AI, the AI brand and the experience that goes with it. You know, humanization of technology is nothing new, but I do think in terms of exploring human form, imagination, voice, even humor, potentially with human frailty, which has been making us so heroic recently, could be a very exciting opportunity. I deliberately include Lego screens, they Lego backdrops, turning us into potatoes. Actually, AI has enabled some of the brightest points of our working days in the last few weeks. And I wonder, you know, as humans, we seem okay with it when it's helping us live better or at least laugh. However, leaving you with my more final point is that while humanization of technology is undoubtedly a huge opportunity for us all, is there a more fundamental opportunity here, which actually is about reinvention? And we know we are at a moment in time where we are looking to author a future, a potentially different future. And is the answer here in these two distinct stories to actually start from a purpose-led belief and look at the benefit? Because when we mix AI technology with human and with humanity and agree we are here to author a future about humanity's benefit and an experience that delivers on that, potentially this becomes a very, very exciting opportunity. And of course, let's imagine as brand builders, brand storytellers, experience creators, you know, listening today, Together, the future we could author really could be extraordinary. So um, I'm going to say goodbye. Um, and again, thank you so much. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon to everyone from around the world um, for listening in today. Um, I will be handing you over to Morgan um, from Fitch, who is our Chief Strategy Officer at Fitch and a great partner in ideas and creating extraordinary experiences. Um, and I'll be handing you over to him as I leave. So thank you so much for your time. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Thanks very much. Bye.